She a 10, but she uses it's giving. She a 10, but she uses not me. She's a 10, but she's vegan. That's a four. She's a 10, but her best friend's a boy. Uh, two. She's a 10, but she wears Vans. <laughs> she's like a nine, but she respects herself. Ugh, that can't, like no. She a 10, but she got a Visco account. She a 10, but she's still wearing a mask. She's a 10, but she hates mint chocolate chip ice cream. Zero. <laughs> Today's discussion is really inspired by a conversation me and Olivia had with a waitress when we went to afternoon tea in London. This really sweet woman was telling us all about the tea, the dessert options, and I couldn't help but to compliment her that she had this beautiful accent, to which she responded with surprise. She told us that she hates her Italian accent. Both me and Olivia were just so taken aback because we found it really pretty. It's crazy how a unique and beautiful trait someone else sees in us can be viewed internally as a flaw. And this reminds me of a trend I've been seeing on TikTok. So she's a 10, right? But um... She a 10, but she watches ASMR and mukbangs. She's a 10, but she doesn't shave her armpits. She's a 10, but every time she loses something, she makes you find it. She's a 10, but she wears bands. She a 10, but she take naps. She a 10, but using somebody else's Netflix password. She's a 10, but she cannot cook. She's a 10, but she doesn't watch Stranger Things. She's a 10, but she only listens to rap. She a 10, but she the middle child. Probably like a 6. A 4. Like a 5. 4. So basically, she's a 10, but because of these 3,000 reasons that make her unique and a human, she's now a 4 or 6. Now, don't get me wrong. I know most of this trend is for entertainment purposes, and I find them funny and fun too. But like a proper Gen Z, let me be an overthinker and break down how this trend reflects society's current skewed vision toward finding a 10 out of 10 partner, how rating other people reinforces some problematic stereotypes, and how regardless of how weird and quirky we can be, we are all 10 out of 10s through our own terms. Let's get started. G is a a nine, but eats bananas like corn on the cob. <laughs> That's tough. What is this trend? To break this trend down, it's basically people rating themselves or others out of 10 and then throwing in a random fact that will change the score. Let us go through some of the examples together. She's a 10, but she puts milk before her cereal. She's a 10, but she can't park. She's a 10, but she cried when One Direction broke up. She's a 10, but she takes naps when life gets hard. You get the idea. She's a 10, but not anymore, because she's relatable by having human traits. The 10, but she says, I'm fine when she's sad. That's just a woman. A self-fulfilling prophecy. This trend is fun and lighthearted, but in line with the illusory truth effect of psychology, when something gets repeated over and over, even when we know that a piece of information is not 100% true, as it gets repeated and reinforced enough, eventually we begin to believe it as the truth. Like how over the years you've heard a lot of people say that taking vitamin C will help you prevent a cold and later find out that there is no evidence that taking vitamin C's can actually prevent cold. But you take those vitamin C gummies anyways. The intention of the trend is fun because it highlights a lot of relatable things guys and girls do that give other people an ick. But that might be a little problematic. When we hear the repeated message enough that someone is not a 10 because god forbid they put milk before their cereal and then accept that as the universal truth. She's like at a hundred but she believes in like the sign. Uh, oh man, like a, no, like a two, not even on the scale. And that society collectively begins to build an ick for innocuous behaviors or what would have otherwise been considered as a normal behavior. She's a nine, but she has plants in her room. It's not a garden center, love. Six. As mentioned before, the majority of TikTok's demographic is full of impressionable young adults and teens who haven't even figured out who they are as a person yet, let alone how to form sound judgments on other people. And it might sound absurd when saying it out loud, but when a message such as, quote, she's a 10, but she also does or does not do this, get repeated like a broken record on a young person's For You page, their perception of their identity and of other people will be changed. Imagine continuously seeing a TikTok claiming that a girl is a 10, but they are, I don't know, too tall. She's a 10, but she's taller than you. 
Oh, that's dead. And you, like me, happen to be a girl who is tall. You begin to become more and more conscious of it to the point that it might become an insecurity of yours instead of being proud of it. And the whole rating another person, not just yourself, and adding or deducting points is very much a reflection of modern day dating. Allow me to explain. The ideal of dating the perfect person. Ugly. Ugly. Ugly, but Goldman Sachs? How am I supposed to tell which one is you if you have the same four frat brothers in every photo? It's like a sea of Patagonia vests. Wow, your favorite show is The Office? Everyone's favorite show is The Office. If I continue to be this picky, I will be alone. Who is this bitch all over him in this photo? Oh, that's his mom. With the ease of dating apps and endless profiles with bite-sized information, modern day dating is becoming the picking and choosing of players who add up the greatest score, if not the perfect score. And yes, I said players. Because dating is becoming more of a game where each profile you swipe against is no longer perceived as a human, but a scoring game of can I get the person with the highest amount of scores in terms of attractiveness, success, prospect, where each person has become so disposable and where no one commits to anyone because we keep on thinking that there's someone out there better for us. Someone who will be our 10 out of 10. First of all, this is why I'm not the biggest fan of the apps because it dehumanizes the users. And oh my God, dating is going to be a whole entire series on my channel, but mirroring what is shown in the TikTok trend, the dating culture today is so heavily focused on the 10 out of 10 unrealistic ideal, that the ideal person should be perfectly designed for you, that every trivial human trait or behavior comes with a positive or negative score, and that your potential future partner is nothing but scores added up together. In addition to that, the trend is funny because you know how absurd it is when someone is a 10 but becomes a 4 because they ask you if you love them if they were warm or rewatches Twilight every month. But this happens all the time in dating where trivial traits and behaviors become quote unquote red flags. Where the real red flags are in the personality and someone's level of honesty and how a person shows up or does not show up for you. This applies to every relationship. If you are constantly rating every human on trivial traits and behaviors, A, it's so tiring, and B, you legit will not be able to form any genuine connections. When every interaction is seen as a transaction of scorekeeping, and the fact that a lot of normal behaviors or simply preferences were given a lot of shade. Again, this just reminds me of the pick me girl trend where people with one certain preference just believe they are superior, which leads to my belief, she's a 10, no buts. Imagine how boring the world will be if we all enjoy the same food, listen to the same music, and put our toilet papers up the same way. Harmonious, but boring. To see this TikTok trend in a positive light, I actually think it highlights some of the really cute and quirky traits of girls and guys that do not decrease their rating scores, but in fact, completes it. She's a 10, but all she does is eat, sleep, and overthink with anxiety. That makes her a 20. <laughs> Just like the Italian waitress at afternoon tea, what may be perceived as a personal flaw to some is actually a shining point to others. So instead of fitting to a standard or a trending scoring system online, embrace whatever the heck you or others find you weird because it takes a gem. It takes a gem to find a gem. If someone lacks the capability to embrace your full uniqueness, that's their loss. Like feeding caviar to someone who only enjoys eating plastic chicken nuggets. It's a waste. She's a 10, but she... No, that's it actually. She's a 10. I really love how the trend evolved to she's a 10, no buts. She's just a 10. It shows that a woman or man can be truly defined on their own terms instead of the absurd ratings that other people give them. Just because someone rate you as a 7 because you listen to country, death metal, I don't know, EDM, whatever's trending on the radio, doesn't mean you are a seven. If you are a 10, then you are a 10, regardless of the values others assign to you. What would you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10? I'm a 10. A 10? Yeah. That's like flawless though. Yeah, I am flawless. You're flawless? Okay, so like, what? Like, let's be real this time. Mm -hmm. All right, so like on one to 10, like for real, like realistically, what would you rate yourself? A 10. Like if someone calls a $100 bill 10 cents, it's still a goddamn $100 bill. At the end of the day, 
Other people can assign values, ratings, scores to us however they want, but the only score that truly matters is the one you give yourself. And if you want, you can be a 10 out of 10, period. So that is all I wanted to discuss today regarding the she's a 10 but she is not trend. Comment below the traits that make you a 10. I can't wait to read them. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram to join my growth journey. I'll see you next week. Bye. This is the end.